Hi, friends, and welcome to 15241 Today Talk. And uh, Jim Render and I have an opportunity to spend some time with a real good guy, an effervescent individual and a championship baseball player, Grant Jackson, who's been an Upper St. Clair <clears throat> resident for a long, long time. Jim, get us started off here. Well, I've, I've, I've known him for a long time and had his son in, in class and tried to recruit him. And, and now today I find out that uh, we have an Ohio background. Yeah. And we're both from Ohio. And uh, I didn't realize, I know, know about his baseball career, but I didn't realize what a football player you were at Fostoria High School in Fostoria, Ohio. And uh, my uncle, and we've talked about my uncle, I think, in the past, who, who got me into coaching. My uncle was at one time the head coach at Fostoria High School. And uh, he later on had uh, Vic Janowitz as when he was the head coach at Elyria. So tell us a little bit about Fostoria, and, and, and I shouldn't talk just about football because you played, it sounds like you played everything. Uh, I was a four-letter. Four letter. So did you play uh, baseball and track at the same no, time? No, we didn't have baseball in my school. I never did play baseball in my school. Isn't that amazing? I ran track. That's amazing. Yeah, because the school, false story is not that big now. You only got about 15,000 people or maybe, might be even less now with everybody moving out and younger kids going elsewhere to get better jobs or whatever. But that's, it's not a big joint. It's only about 25,000 people. Well, but you said you made all Ohio in football and basketball. Yeah. I mean, talk about that a little bit. That, I well, mean, Ohio- in, in football, I made third string All-American. And that was the first time anybody from my school ever made a high school in America. It says my brother Carlos Jackson, which is your friend, your uncle, your dad shouldn't know because if you go back to Fall Story and you walk into Fall Story High School, there's a, a big wall, a lot of trophies. And there's a lot of Jacksons in there. <laughs> there's five Jackson boys. Is that right? Yeah, and uh, we all raised Kane, had a good time. Were you a running back? I was a running back. I played with the uh, – the, uh, Three, three backs, three back set, and uh, I was running back on right hand side so I can run or throw, you know, option. And whatever it took, you know, because a lot of time we have plays where all the ball, everybody will go over there by themselves, and be just me in the center on one side of the field, and they hike me the ball and see what I could do. <laughs> I know I got on runners. So well, <laughs> uh, tell me and tell our audience here. You, you, you didn't have a high school baseball team. No, it didn't. We so, had, I mean, how, how, do you, how did you matriculate that and wind up a, you know, as a major league ball player when you didn't have it? Well, you know what happened? Back in our, uh, my hometown of uh, Falls Story, Ohio, there's a guy by the name Andy Varys. He owned a sporting goods store there. He also had the American Legion baseball in the area there. Right. And we played against uh, Fremont, Finley, and the areas such. And uh, I could always throw. So I would either play, you, know, we all, you always played all the positions. So I started pitching one day, I'm out there throwing, I would uh, pitch and next game I would go out and play center field or whatever they told me to do. And uh, then one day, a um, guy named Tony Lucadello came by and he saw me out there throwing him. And at that time, Tony was with the Philadelphia Phillies in 1960, before me. Excuse me, one second, now, how old would you have been? 18, 18. 19, okay. yeah. This was, well, let's see, uh, I played uh, 10th, 11th, 12th, American Legion Baseball. Okay. And then it just went there, and I was known as a hard thrower and wild as a son of an uncle, you know, I'm left-handed, and I'm supposed to be wild, I guess. <laughs> so then, but uh, I had a lot of strikeouts. And at that time, in 1962, when, when Tony, I said Tony Lucadello found myself, these guys you're going to know, uh, Alex Johnson, Ferguson Jenkins, Mike Marshall, and a guy named Larry Hernstein were all from Ohio. And uh, he, he had Frigg and I and, and, and uh, Mike all signed together, Philadelphia Phillies, in 1962. Now, if you remember, in 1962, the Philadelphia Phillies lost 23 in a row. And he had wanted me to sign, but at that time my father had passed when I was a sophomore in high school, so my mom needed money. So I signed, because mom said, you know, Grant? Yes, ma'am, and blah, 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 and signed to play ball, took care of what I could, you know, 
got myself a little 1952 Chevy it's all been up it's gonna cost a hundred <laughs> couple of dollars and I got that and I went to uh, started at Bowling Green State University I didn't finish I started but and like I said I didn't finish and uh, I started playing ball and like my brother Carlos was my biology teacher in high school Carlos was my backfield coach in football and my track coach then Carlos got transferred from from a false story to a, a BG, a Bowling Green. I don't know whether you heard of Don Nealon. Don Nealon's a friend of mine. And him and Carlos are buddies over there in, in, in BG. And beside his, when he was up in West Virginia coaching up there, I would see him at the golf resort down in Deep Creek. Right. And uh, I don't know where he is now because I know he's retired. But uh, they got the good nights to go over and watch the practices all the time. And the Carlos said, she, Green, excuse me, Spanish. He said, you you better than that guy right there, you know. I said, yeah, he said, that's what I want to do. And then baseball came on, and he took me aside. I said, look, God gave you a lot of ability. One, one blow in football, you're done. Play baseball, you'll be around for a long time. So we sit on the figure, well, Philadelphia lost 23 in a row. Now I told Carlos, I told uh, Coach uh, Dick, Dick, I can't remember the difference last name. If I can't make it football, I mean, in baseball, I come back, finish school, and throw racers at kids. <laughs> well, I was in the big leagues in no time. And about a year and a half, I went down, and signed in '62, went down to Nicaragua that winter. Got my name was Sam Jones. Got my curveball together, and I could throw real hard at that time. And uh, they, in fact, I don't know. If, I'm, I don't know how much you know about baseball. They got me a Pumpsy Green, Heard of Sam him. Sad Jones, Sad Sam Jones. Heard of him. Dick, uh, Dick, what's his last name? Another hitter. You know somebody said, so we're going to start calling you uh, Tan Sandy. I said, Sandy who? I said, Sandy Koufax. I said, oh, I heard of that dude. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so Koufax is number 32. So I said, well, they're going to do that. I took, took number 22 and, and changed it over to 20, uh, 32 and changed it to 23, which I've been wearing since, since then. And... Uh, Started having a good season. I got, like I said, I could throw hard. I threw a no-hitter down there. Well, I mean, back up. So I lost my first three games. And they said, give me a semi home. They said, let me get the young hard throwing, no talent, and so and so out of here. But Sam Jones taught me the curveball. And got me Dick taught me the change up. I was gone. Yeah. Next 20 years, well, Lanny saw me. Played for 20 years in the major league and never got so much as a bent fingernail. And, Coached for another 30 with the uh, Cincinnati Red Chicago Cubs and stuff like this here. And I'm sitting up here <laughs> talking to y'all. <laughs> um, did you play sports at Bowling Green? No, no, I never got a chance because at that time, well, I, well back then I used to go both ways. And at that time, we only had one bar. And I was playing defense against the city of Fremont, Ohio. I, mean, I know you know where it is. Fremont. And they had a guy named Jim Tiller. Cat could fly. But by my playing uh, defensive back, till, till the cut across, cut down the right side, left side line, if you look at it, I had to tag, I had to a uh, caddy corner him, because I know he could around me in track, so I know he could smoke me in a, in a uniform. So I saw him coming, so I started running toward the goal pole line right there. When he got close, I dove. His heel come up, broke the uh, mask, his other star coming and knocked me out here, and I got stitches here and Ooh. here in football. And that was it. Went and got a butter, butterfly, stitched it together, play ball. And that was it. So you signed in 62 with the Phillies? Yeah. Okay. And you were only in the minor leagues then a short while? I wasn't in the minor leagues. I signed in 62. I went to uh, A ball uh, twice a year and a half in Bakersfield. Double A, double A triple, Little Rock, Arkansas. Major leagues. So I about to, in '64 I came to big leagues, before the union, before we had the uh, baseball union, and um, it's Fergie, myself, they didn't bring up Mike Marshall and Alex. So I say, and but I went first, and Jim Mark was the manager in Philadelphia, and he didn't like no rookies. So yeah, I went up there. So he, I said, hey, you just sit down and watch the big boys. Now if you remember in 1962. Yeah, no, 64, we were there. But at that time, before the union, we didn't get the time there for big league uh, being in the major leagues until uh, 
was the guy, the hand of the baseball union back then, the short guy to come to me. You know, he got our days to make it. Uh, I, I actually am with the 19 years, 104 days in the major leagues. And that was it. And, you know, uh, it just went, just continued on after that. But as far as playing football and stuff in high and college, no, I didn't. But I could have, you know, but I, like I said, my mom needed money. And I just went forth. And uh, You made I, the right decision. <laughs> oh, well, rough. like Carlos said, you're not going to play uh, 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 football for 20 years. And back then, you know, you thought I could run because I used to run, run 100-yard dash and like in 10 and 1 or 10 flat, you know. And that's before I knew how to run. And we were running on cinders back then. We didn't have no play track. So. And then from the Phillies to the Orioles. From, yes, sir. Phillies, uh, Orioles. Orioles are the Yankees. Yankees, Yankees Pirates. No, well, I got drafted to Seattle Mariners. Oh, that's right, yes. But I told them I couldn't make that trip. They called me in Puerto Rico and said, uh, can't remember the guy's name. He said, hey, Buck, welcome to uh, Seattle. And I said, oh, no. I said, I don't think I can make that trip. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, they could call my agent. His name is, my agent's name is Seymour Goldstein out of Baltimore. I said, Cy, I'm not going to Seattle. He said, what do you want to do, Buck? I said, anywhere, I'm going to stay on this coast here because it's closer to Puerto Rico. Two days later, I was a pirate. And that's been all uphill since then. And a great pirate. Uh, yeah. All right, but back to the Orioles. So set, you were on the 71 Orioles team, right? 71, yep. Yep, so you, you look, go up against Clemente and all Steve Blass. I played against them all in the, in the National League before. That's why I told Earl Weaver, I said, let me start a game against the uh, National League because they – if you remember, well, 1969 was my All-Star year. You check the records. I was the only left hand on baseball to beat the Pirates four times in the season. Check Correct. It out. Yeah. <laughs> As they do, they don't bother me at all. And that's when they had a big red machine and, and ourselves. Basically, there's only two teams back then: the Dodgers and the Pirates. The Dodge, I mean, um, uh, Cincinnati and the Pirates. So um, Orioles and the uh, American League. And I knew them all. So like every time we have a meeting, I said, no, no, don't do this. Matty Lou, bust him in cycle. I said, like to run him, be swinging the button running, keep him in the house. Bust him here, slider out there, make him pop, the, pop it up the left field like I did. And 69 was that, and Matika was in left field, and I made, how do you do to hit the ball to left field? Were you with us then? No, I was not, no. Yeah, brought, me, brought in uh, me to pitch, set the cover to left field. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. You talking about '79? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yes. Yes. And we had you. we had to call you on this show. And yeah. We talked about going to left field. And I told him. I told Chuck, Chuck standing right there. You dropped that ball. You're not going to make it to the dugout. <laughs> <laughs> well, but '71. Uh, um, why did you guys lose to the Pirates? Just the because Pirates we were had better. Because we a guy or? by the name of Mike Cuellar. Hmm. Mike Cuellar is a left-handed Cubano. Now I'm not nothing against the Cubans. But here, our instructions were, start you like one for one for 22 or two for 22, whatever. There's only one guy that got to beat a pitch around, Clemente. Don't let Clemente beat you. Oh, no, nah, don't worry about nothing. When I hit him in Puerto Rico, I get him all the time. Well, check, check how many hits Clemente got off him. And he got that home run in right center field. And I just sent the deck out. I jumped up and ran around to the clubhouse. So... Uh, I club those guys. I said, Buck, what are you doing? There? I said, Man, I said, we let we let community beat us. And then they meet we, and before every game, you go over every hit, and nowadays you got things you look at like you're a quarterback. Back then you locked it in. I I can still tell you how right now how to pitch with all the guys I faced in the major league, because you lock it in. It's like anything else. As a teacher, if you forget what you you learn in college, you can't be a teacher. But you have it in here, you don't have it written down. Right. And you have, your recall has to really kick in. So that's what it was. And so was fast forward to 79. Mm -hmm. What was it like to be with that crew, the 79 Pirates with Willie and Dave Parker? And best, the best ever, man. Well, just like the Orioles, you know, I had a bunch of guys over there also. But with the Pirates, we, we called the Jesco Bucks. We part of for days. Play hard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to expound on no, that term, party for days. Yeah, huh? yeah, you caught good, yourself there. Yeah, had to <laughs> play hard and play hard and play hard. <laughs> um, what was what made that '79 team so good? Well, uh, we had Pop Stardew was running the show, 
And we, we didn't have a meeting, but you know, you uh, follow by example. Said Jim Renner was a football coach. He didn't have to tell guys what to do. If you sit down and you always watch your coach. And I used to watch Pop a lot. Before him, I used to watch Frank Robinson. Before that, I used to watch Johnny Callis and Richie Allen because they're the leaders on the team. So when the, with, the, with the Pirates here, Stardew was the reason why we called him Pop. And he never had a meeting, but he would start talking. And when Pop starts talking, everybody kind of lean forward. What do you say, man? And you listen. Hey, Chicago Cubs, they got a good team, but they can't whoop us. Ain't nobody come on our clubhouse in our town and whoop us. Hey, is that enough? Let's go. That was it. And we didn't, there was anybody, only team, the only team we had trouble with was the Mets. And why we did, I, don't, I can't put no finger on it, but anybody else. How many years were, were you with the Yankees? I was only with them for about uh, half a season. I ended up being 6-0. and And back then, I, I, and I hadn't started for a long time. So Catfish Hunter had come up with a growing injury. So uh, Chuck, uh, Billy says, uh, Buck, can you start? I said, I, I can guarantee you five. <laughs> you know, Thurman says, yeah, give it to Buck. You know, Chris Chambers, yeah, I saw Buck pitch before, blah, blah, blah. And I started. Well, in that little thing we're speaking of right now, I beat the Cleveland Indians to put us, uh, to put us in the chance for the playoffs World Series. Went across the uh, lake, Lake Erie, and beat the, the uh, Chicago, the uh, Detroit Tigers. Tigers. And that's when the party started. <laughs> and there you go. And that year, when, when I was at the Yankees, I was like 6 0 with the 0.54 ERA. And I took Sparky Lyle's job. And Sparky and I were good friends. I say Sparky. <laughs> they, bought me, they bought me here for a reason. What year was this? 1976. 1976 with the Yankees. Who? You mentioned like Pop Stargell, the leader in the clubhouse. Who who was the leader in the Yankee clubhouse at that time? Well, at that time you had uh, Chris Chambers, Thurman Munson, another Ohio boy. Yep, right, right down in Canton, Ohio. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's why we were running. Yeah, all of us <laughs> had a good time. And you know, but you always need a leader. That's one thing. I'm not going to talk about our team here in Pittsburgh. But I only think I do know we need a leader. You're going to win. Somebody step forward. Have a, have a team meeting like we used to have. Chuck not invited, Joe's not invited, Skins. We sit down and talk ourselves. This, this is what we're made of, and this is our capabilities, and this is what we can do. So they signed for us to play. They had Dave Parker. Dog, when, when we got Madlock, that was a little lever to put the chain together, and it was all over. But the party again. And we kept, we kept right on rolling. I liked Madlock. Dog, dog was is hard. Mad, I was a Madlock yeah. fan. I call him Madlock. You I didn't know that, did you? I did not know that. Dog is a, great, dog is a good athlete, man. What, what, when you were with the Yankees, was Billy Martin the manager? Yeah, Billy and I were good buddies. Really? If you're I didn't know he got along with anybody. Yeah, Billy, g get Billy Martin's book. They wrote the last one that they wrote. The page number, I think, like in 106, is he told George Steinberg, if I would have 25 Grand Jackson, you and I wouldn't be fighting every day. <laughs> that was it. That's in the book? Yeah. What yeah. page was it? I think it's 106. <laughs> yeah. My, my brother-in-law told me in Puerto Rico, oh, you're grand. Neda. Billy, 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 Billy Martin think you're grand, uh, uh, a good guy. I said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you talked about the, the Colby in left field, uh, one batter, you pitching the Darrell Evans. Duke, what, yeah. Were you surprised when Chuck said you're coming in, and what did Chuck say to you when, when he – had you come in to pitch the Dura 11 with Kent Colby in left field? Well, it's not so much what you said. It's probably the expression on both of ours' face. Chuck hands me the ball and said, Teak, you go to left field. I said, Chuck, you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I looked at Teak. I said, Teak, I'm going to make him hit the ball to your left field. So I busted my heart too fast. So I was in a slide on the black, pop out the left field. And I got a kiss here. I said, in the back of my mind, <laughs> you better not drop it. <laughs> it's it's phenomenal it? that he should be out there for one batter and you hit and he in the ball the guy Darrell Evans hits the ball to him. Well, back then you know you know not say I'm I'm not all that smart, but I know how to place it, how to get you out. I know what you couldn't couldn't hit. And uh, plus, all we do is a pitchers, all we do is shag all day long. 
Uh, here is here for two hours. You shag for he, two hours. Teak mentioned that. that yeah. He, that he spent a lot of time. Yeah, we yeah we spent a lot of time shagging. Sometimes it would be like uh, well, Larry Demery, the guys that could run, who all, all thought we were good athletes, would play games. 50 cent a dollar. Whoever catch my, uh, most pop flies, you know, or we play for service in the clubhouse. If you serve, you go in the clubhouse, yeah, give me a grape soda, man. No, not too much ice. <laughs> so that's, that's, <laughs> there's stuff like this here. But it's always fun. You always had to, not to say it had to be a con- competitive type of thing, but that's what we are. That's why we're athletes. Mm-hmm. We like competition. No matter shooting where I was or playing jacks. One of the great, <laughs> one of the, one of the, the, the answer to one of the great trivia questions, 1979, who was the winning pitcher in game seven? The answer is Grant Jackson. Yes, sir. Have, yes. Having me on the mama, pop took him deep. Give pop a hug. Hey, let's party. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't party with him because I drove back to Pittsburgh because I had been in those party before because you guys got in at six in the morning at four o'clock at the, four o'clock in the, in the morning i was here in pittsburgh because i drove from from baltimore, from baltimore yeah I, I knew i didn't have family but i had a lot of friends and my lawyers agents and all my neighbors hey Bucky, bah, 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 okay y'all. hey i got a blow baby i'll see you on the downstroke so when season's over i would run back to baltimore talk to seymour about some business you know i go out to see with one of my best friends is uh, Kant or K, 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 no, C-A-N-T-O. He's a, a president of a bank there in Baltimore. So Silvio, a uh, Latin guy, he, we sent talk. He's very intelligent. And uh, go back and say to them, hey, give me some rice and beans. No, 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 just a little bit. That's yeah, And just jump in the car. At that time, I had a van. And uh, came back to Baltimore. I went to Pittsburgh here. Um, one of the great things for you is you're married to a tremendous woman, Millie. How'd you meet Millie? Well, Millie and I met, uh, it wasn't, it was by accident that her dad found out that I liked her. Well, let me put let me back up some. There's, there's a guy by the name John Briggs. I don't remember him. B and I, this is while I was living, playing in Puerto Rico. And, uh, you know, they had a lot of pretty women down there. <laughs> and plus, the fillers that told me, hey, Grant, you better get married. Because, you know, they put a detective on me for one month. Myself and Dick Allen. Well, we, we ran that dude to death. Because <laughs> 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 we knew all the back end. We used to run to a bar down on 21st and Spruce, go upstairs to a bar, and there's a little window there. Richie would go around and get a cup of drinks. So I'd go up and take the latch out just in case I see Richie. I said, dude's behind us. He's a... He had them old, inspect the clues, old glasses, a little you know, short dude. So Richard said, look, let's, let's dust him off. Well, I only said dust him off. I thought, let's knock him out. <laughs> no, let's, let's go. So that night, Richard said, let's get, get, let's, uh, get rid of him. So I found out when the guy came to the bar, he went and sat down there with the windows over here. We're sitting here, and the windows right there. So I went and got, <laughs> lift the window up, got it ready. Richie, lift the window, jump. Ran, jumped down, ran across uh, somebody's roof, jumped from that roof to another roof, and we were gone. Went to the ballpark the next day. John Quinn says, hey, Grant, you guys got rid of your, your uh, guy trailing you. <laughs> Richard said, yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't too fast. <laughs> but anyway, that's what, uh, something like that. And uh, then... Just keep, I'll just go from there. I mean, so, no, no so you, trouble. So you met Millie, and you got, and it's, you, and you, then did you live oh. in the always in the off season? Did you live in Puerto Rico? Yeah, off, well, yeah, because uh, she didn't want to go come back to live in the wintertime by herself, and uh, well, not by herself, but my mom. She didn't like the cold. I, mean, I, I, I lost my train of thought for a second, and uh, but I met her anyway. I had where, where uh, did you meet Millie? In Caguas, C A G U A S, Puerto Rico. Okay. That's for Johnny Briggs and I, and guys I'm speaking of, which I, Ferguson Jenkins, we all played down there. And I would see her, and I didn't know where she lived or anything else. Well, the next year I went down, they would always furnish with a home. So they, then... You're fine. You're you know, fine. So uh, when they did it, so when I came out of my house, I was walking to the ballpark, because down there I didn't have no car or nothing. I walked to the ballpark, and I saw her. Oh, <laughs> there she go. <laughs> and, and, uh, and you and Millie have raised three wonderful children, huh? We had Tell got me about married your kids. in 1968, and the guys, they're around here somewhere. 
Uh, Yolanda lives right over here off of Willowbrook here in uh, Upper St. Clair. Grant lives in uh, Lewistown, PA. He's uh, working over here at Door Corporation. My daughter Deborah lives down in Dayton, Ohio. She works with the Cadillac dealership down there, her and her husband Carlos. And they got three kids, and then they got three, and G2 got, G G2 got three, so there we go. I tried to recruit his son Grant to play football back in the day. Yeah. Millie wasn't in favor of that. Millie didn't want, no, I was, she watching guys get hurt this and get hurt that, and she's, no, not my baby. So I said, look, I says, uh, D2, you want to play? He said, well, I'm going to listen to mom. I said, hey, do whatever you want, I got you. That was it. He when he wanted to play a ball. I, I watched him, I caught him, I, but he could hit. But he run about he run about the speed of Sean Casey. You know, <laughs> <laughs> very, very slow. Wait till we tell Sean that story, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I told G2 at the All-Star game, and uh, uh, I said, Grant, I said, can you beat that guy? I don't know, Daddy. Can you beat that guy? I don't know. I said, can you hit that guy? I was like, I can hit that guy. You know, I said, because when you go to the spring training, this is what you, you compare to, and that's how we scout you guys. If you can make the team, can you help us? You stay. You can't, no, I don't want to adjust a good guy. I can find a good guy in a bar. Can you help the team? Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, I learned all this from Chuck Tanner, see. So. Well, well, um, has, has it been great for you and Millie to raise the kids in Upper St. Clair? It's the best thing to happen because what we did, we took, a, took them out of school in Puerto Rico. They went to school in Puerto Rico. That's why they can speak two different languages. And, and, you, and you learn how to, uh, and plus it's up here in Upper St. Clair, I'm, I'm going to brag. It's a nice neighborhood and you don't get, we get in trouble, but it's not like, bang, bang, or stick, stick, you know. If you get into trouble, it's probably with the teacher or running the stoplight, but everybody knows the cops up here. The cops know knows your dad and mom, so you, why get in trouble? You can't, where are you gonna run? Everybody knows where you live at. Like, uh, I spoke in, on a, a stage right here against, with a senior class, with Chief Kelly. Right. And he's right there in his curtain back here, and he's up for the uh, seniors graduating class. And he comes to Grant, would you come and talk to the senior graduating class? I said, Deborah Yolanda was sitting right there. Mm -hmm. and I was back there, that's when I had my cowboy boots and my World Series thing and stuff on. And uh, she was out of talking and the kids weren't listening. I'm back there, I'm saying, man, I said, hey, these kids ain't have a, haven't heard a word that he said. So when I came, I started talking like him. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't need a mic. Yeah. I didn't need a mic. And I got across. And, uh, I just want to say, all I want to do is wait, say one of you guys, just listen. Because when you leave here, just say, you go out the next street, it's another world. Yeah. So they eat yeah. you like a, like a uh, hot dog and whatever. This well, Grant, been we're, a, this we're, has we're been a, a fun interview. <laughs> it, we, we, we could have done an hour and a half with him, couldn't we? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Grant, thanks for joining us. And, folks, Pleasure. thank you. Thank you. 15241 Today Talk. Linda Dudzinski, our coordinating producer, Glenn Ward, our producer, director. Thank you for joining us.